Hey Aquarius, welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to January of 2022. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. Happy New Year to you. I hope you guys are doing well. So this is going to be a general reading for you Aquarius for the month of January. Um, so if you're new here, hi, my name is Eric. It's so wonderful to meet you. I really should not be so rude and put my phone on vibrate. Yay. <laughs> very well. Very, very nice to meet you. My name is Eric. If you are new here, please consider subscribing, joining the Unicorn Herd. Now, what we're going to do is I'm first going to speak to Aquarius Rising. Now, when I speak to Aquarius Rising, for those of you that are new, I am going to be speaking from the true sidereal point of view, which is fairly different from the mainstream tropical practice. First of all, <clears throat> it does include Ophiuchus, okay? And then second of all, uh, the, the placements change. Often all of your placements will change, but not all the time. But so if you're new, new to um, sidereal astrology, I highly recommend that you stick around and, you know, see, get a vibe for it, see how it feels for you. If you're interested in uh, looking at your sidereal chart and you would like a little bit of an interpretation with that, or you'd like just like some help with that, I am available to provide that to you. I could do like a little mini chart, mini sidereal chart reading for you if you would like. Um, I'm also available for private readings of any sort. All that information can be found down in the description box below. So like I said, we're going to start with Aquarius Rising. And then after that, we're going to just get a general card pull for the collective uh, energy or sign of Aquarius, which is non-denominational. Okay. So that's more for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, or like the cross watcher or whatnot, whatever. Take a look in the description box and the pinned comment below for timestamps if you would like to skip ahead to the general card reading. Um, yes, but the first half is going to be Aquarius rising. So, and that's really how all of this astrology is going to fit for Aquarius, but whatever. Let's see. Uh, please make sure to smash that like button for me. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know how this resonates for you. Um, or if you just want to say hi, hi. And then also, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Yeah. All right. Let's get into this for my Aquarius rising. Yeah. All right, Aquarius. So the title of your reading this month is... A, an, a, a about face, as you could see in um, in, the, in the video title. Um, and the reason that I, I, I got that title for you, Aquarius, is because it feels like what's happening for you at this point throughout this month with what's going on in your chart astrologically, which we are going to look at in a second, it feels like there is a deeper connection that you're being, that you're having access to, that you're gaining access to here now in this moment of January. Now, this also could be something that has been in the works for you for quite a while because your, well, one of your ruling planets, Uranus, is, uh, has been moving through, uh, through Aries. Um, and it is currently retrograde in Aries and has been retrograde in Aries on, since August of 2021 about mid-August of 2021, right around the 8-8 portal, or maybe like right after that or something like that, whatever. But with Uranus having been moving through Aries, which is the sign of the self, Aries is the ruler of the first house, it feels like over this time period up until now, you have been going through certain situations that have been helping you to get connected with a deeper sense of self. And now at this moment, it feels like, it looks like you are going to be making some sort of about face or just turning around, changing direction, maybe making even like what could seem to be like a 180 for some of you. Um, many of you maybe opening up to the spiritual realm more. Um, that could just be for some of you, which could be bringing forward a greater sense of awareness and purpose. But whether you're really like, I mean, okay, so obviously you believe in astrology or whatnot, whatever, or you wouldn't, or and even tarot readings, or you wouldn't be watching this video, right? But even if you're not like, you don't consider yourself to be like super witchy or like super, super spiritual, blah, blah, blah. It feels like you're, you're, it's almost as if you're being reminded of something, Aquarius, something about yourself, your sense of self, your drive, your motive, or what it is you're meant to do here on this planet in this lifetime. 
it feels like with this deeper understanding or maybe even like a reconnection to yourself in a way there is a change in how you are of service almost okay so again even if it's not necessarily that you're opening up to the more spiritual realm of things i feel like there's something that's happening for you during the course of this month that is changing the way you view your life in general or maybe how it is you are of service and it's like you're getting reconnected to a deeper sense of purpose okay now some of you may be, have been learning a new skill over the course of this time period that uh, Uranus has been retrograde specifically through Aries, or you may find that you may want to or need to learn a new skill at this time. And that is absolutely connected to this about face or this deeper connection with yourself that you're gaining or uh, gaining access to that's giving you this insight, like I need to be going in a different direction or I need to be doing things differently or doing something differently. Um, now, Uranus, uh, what, what's helping you with this sense of either a desire to learn something new or a, a, a stark awareness of a need to expand your horizons or learn something new is the fact that not only has Uranus been retrograde in Aries for you, Aquarius rising, uh, but for you specifically, Aquarius rising, it's been retrograde in your third house, which is the house of communications, the house of commerce. Um, maybe even business, travel even. Um, the third house can represent your immediate community, whereas the ninth house, which is ruled by Sagittarius, where Venus is currently retrograde, the ninth house would represent foreign lands or communities outside of your initial community, right? That's the ninth house. But the third house is where Uranus, one of your ruling planets, the other one would be Saturn, but Uranus has been retrograde for you within your third house. And on top of that, Mercury, who is the ruler of the third house, is going to be going retrograde this month. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head where that is. Again, we're going to look at the chart in a second. But so because of this Aquarius, um, there could be... For a lot of you, it really feels like there's going to be some sort of stark awareness of how you've got to improve on some sort of skill. I heard relearn something or maybe even learn something new. And when, when Mercury goes retrograde later this month, I feel like that's going to be a prime time for you to really rework this aspect. I do feel like for all of the signs this month, as Mercury goes retrograde, that is going to be a prime opportunity to really get down to the nitty gritty of rewriting your programming, the programming of your mind. Okay. Um, any sort of retrograde motion, just like how Venus is retrograde right now, I personally feel like that is a prime opportunity to change or rework or restructure certain foundations that have been built over time. Now, on top of all of this, again, Venus is retrograde and that is a retrograde through Sagittarius. And so not only would Venus being retrograde help you to want to question or redefine what truly has value to you, question and or redefine your interpersonal relationships, specifically your marriage. If you're married, I did hear that, or any sort of romantic, long-standing romantic relationships you, you, that you had, or long-standing romantic circumstances or situations you've been experiencing, right? This is a prime opportunity with Venus being retrograde for you to rework that. But on top of that, Venus is retrograde through Sagittarius, which is a really expansive sign. And I feel like that's I've been feeling like this retrograde motion through Sagittarius of Venus is helping us to get a much more expanded view of what we really truly could have or get us a, a bigger, much bigger picture of the things that we value and how those how we could reshape those values if we find the things in front of us that we once valued to be not so valuable anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, other things that I channeled for you here, Aquarius, in this about face energy for you are, it, it did, it does kind of feel like 
your cards are being reshuffled or like the the deck of your life you know how we all say well you 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 have to do roll with the cards that you're dealt in life right well at this point Aquarius, I feel like it's like your deck is being reshuffled and you're about to receive a new hand, okay? Your cards are being shuffled, all right? Um, okay, there one was there was one last point, but I actually, I wanna move over to the chart now. So let's look at the chart. So what you would see in front of you right now is the chart for Aquarius rising for the month of January, 2022. Now, don't freak out because if you're looking at this and you're like, oh my God, look at that and all of that energy in just those three houses, that's common. That's happening for everybody right now. Everybody has a two to three house focus right now. For you, Aquarius, your focus is mainly between the 11th and the 12th house and also a little bit of the 10th house. And it's interesting because I did Aries reading today uh, earlier this morning before I did yours. And I'm doing all these readings in correspondence to which day of the week is associated with the ruling planet. And for you, Aquarius, I'm going with Uranus. And Tuesday happens to be a Mars and Uranus affiliation day. And so I did Aries first, and now I'm doing yours afterwards. And the funny thing about that, and this wasn't something that I realized beforehand, but you and Aries have a very similar energy going on here, which actually makes sense because you're one of your ruling planets, Uranus, is retrograde in Aries, right? Okay, that's cool. But the, co the combination there, and maybe actually you might want to watch the Aries reading, not because you're an Aries rising, or maybe you have Aries placements, but one of your ruling planets is moving through Aries. And because this feels so similar to Aries energy, um, you might want to go watch that, okay? But for you, Aquarius, what I see, what I what what really caught my attention while I was sitting here uh, channeling some energies for you was the fact that you have, I want to say your main, actually, Aquarius, your main feature, the main house of focus for you this month is your 11th house, which you, as an Aquarius, are ruler of, okay? And the reason why I'm saying this is because not only, you know, do we have the new moon and the full moon, which happen every month, but this month, what is making January such a powerfully activating month for everybody is the fact that we have this conjunction between the sun and Pluto. Now, a conjunction with the sun really isn't all that major because it happens at least once a year for every planet, right? But, but... And, 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 and to be honest, you know, a Sun-Pluto conjunction, while it does happen at once every year, it's still a pretty powerful thing. Like any sort of, any sort of like conjunction or opposition or square with Uranus tends to be pretty impactful. But that, I'm sorry, not Uranus, Pluto. Any sort of conjunction, square, or, or, um, or opposition with Pluto tends to be super, super powerful. And excuse me, forgive me if I said the Sun and Uranus are conjuncting. They're not. It's the Sun and Pluto that are conjuncting. But anyway, Pluto is a really super powerful energy. Because of that, I also recommend that you watch the Scorpio reading because Pluto is a ruler of Scorpio. And... Again, even if you don't have any Scorpio placements, um, watching that video could get a really give you a really much deeper understanding of the power behind this Plutonian Sun um, uh, uh, conjunction. Now, like I said, really not that big of a deal. Happens once a year, at least. But on top of that right after the exact conjunction between the sun and Pluto, we have a full moon. So the sun and Pluto conjunction is a super powerful moment anyway. But then on top of that, we have a we have the full moon, which is the fullest of the moon's power the day after, okay? Um, so now for you, Aquarius, all of that, the conjunction, the initial conjunction between the sun and Pluto, as well as the full moon, that's all happening in your 11th house right here. And again, and, and, and it just so happens that Sagittarius is in your 11th house, right? I mean, it all, it all makes sense. So what is the 11th house? The 11th house is, people say it's wish fulfillment, okay? 
Um, it's your, it's kind of like your community. Um, it is a house of higher learning, higher awareness. But what I really associated, at least what I associated the 11th house with in this moment for you, Aquarius, is your own energy. And Aquarius tends to be very much service oriented. Aquarius gets a little bit of a bad reputation because they tend to be very, the energy is very emotionally detached. And it's not emotionally detached just, you know, to be a dick about it. <laughs> Aquarius energy is detached because Aquarius is the ruler of innovation and innovation in a way that is meant to benefit all of the collective, right? Not just certain parts of it. But in order to really be effective in that way, Aquarius, you have to be emotionally detached because if your emotions are getting wrapped up in all the little bits and pieces that uh, and concerns that are being thrown your way, nothing's ever going to get done right? Okay. So as I was looking through all of this, let's move forward first. What you see here is January 4th. This is the day that this reading is being recorded, but let's fast forward to the 16th, which is the day of the conjunction between the sun and Pluto. Okay. And this is happening in your 11th house while Mars, which is the ruler of Aries, um, and also the ruler of the first house Mars has been making a transit, moved through Scorpio in your 10th house. And with Mars moving through Scorpio, I've been feeling like this is deep excavation of the masculine, of your process, of your movement forward, of your drive forward. Uh, deeper understanding is coming to that. And then Mars moves into Ophiuchus. And as you can see here, by the time of the 16th, Mars is almost at the end of Ophiuchus. But with all of this reshaping of our personal selves with one of your ruling planets of Uranus, which is a planet of massive change, massive revolution, okay, a planet of freedom and liberation, had that planet, Uranus, having moved, been moving through Aries specifically retrograde at this moment, it's been helping us reshape everything. It's been helping us reshape ourselves, come to a deeper understanding of what it is we truly want out of life, liberating us from a lot of the mental confines or the mental or the even societal conditioning or structures that have been plaguing us over our lives. Mars is moving through your 10th house, Aquarius, which is a house of career and finances, yes, but mostly, at least this is the biggest thing for you and for Aries, mostly how you are perceived by the collective. And I felt like this is where the about face came, is coming into play for you, Aquarius, because you, sorry, because because it felt like you are starting to realize that something that you've been pursuing or some way that you've been showing up in the world or some action you've been taking or some sort of career advancement you've been trying to move through really actually doesn't resonate with you on a soul level. And this is coming through with Venus moving retrograde through your 11th house in Sagittarius, giving you an expansive mindset, an expansive point of view. But also the 11th house is where we are getting into, where we're really starting to get into some massive collective energies, which then cultivates or culminates in the 12th house. And you have Mercury currently moving into the, uh, 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 the, the 12th house, but then going retrograde. And then Saturn, one of your other ruling planets is also in the 12th house which I feel like is almost kind of stopping you in your tracks, Aquarius, and is kind of making you reconsider how it is you are serving the collective. Some of you, uh, some of you that are like real innovators, um, real like uh, uh, inventors or maybe even architects or whatever, I feel like s some of you may get some deep insights into some things that you could be doing to invent. Like one of the one of the main things that I got in the realm of this situation, if you are like say an inventor or something like that, you've been working on an invention for a while and for some reason it just wasn't working. And then all of a sudden you get this insight that helps you 
really finish the project. But in some cases, for some of you, it changes the whole type of project that you are working on all together. And that could very well be connected to your values, your personal value system, which is being reworked by Venus moving retrograde through Sagittarius also in your 11th house. This is a big level or a big energy Aquarius of how are you of service? More specifically, how have you been of service? And how does that need to change? Now, I also want to say, I also want to point out here, what is making this so, what is making this so much more personal for you, Aquarius, is that Jupiter is, as of today, January 4th, well, let me go back and show you specifically. Let's go back. As of today, January 4th, Jupiter is in your sign of Aquarius, okay? Jupiter is expanding you. And do you see how here on the 4th, which is today, Jupiter is right on the cusp of your 12th house and 1st house. So that brings those both of those energies into play here. And so this is, a, this is actually... I mean, I felt it first, Aquarius, but I didn't really, it, I, it didn't confirm until I looked at this and recognized that Jupiter is actually in your sign right now. So, I mean, this is so personal for you, Aquarius. You have air, your, one of your ruling planets, Uranus, moving retrograde or making a transit through Aries, whether it's retrograde or not, making a transit through Aries. You have all of this energy, pretty much, but the main focus of the month being the new moon, the full moon, and the conjunction between the moon and Pluto happening in your house, the 11th house. And then you have Jupiter in your sign, which is helping to expand. And this is that moment that I was like, oh. So that's where Aquarius is getting this expansive worldview of who they are or who they've been in the world versus who they are to the collective or who they need to be to the collective. Because the 12th house, which is ruled by Pisces, is that big collective sign. A lot of the time, a lot of the times, uh, Pisces can, I'm sorry, the 12th house is referred to as the house of God because Pisces is, or the 12th house is where you really get into that deep collective spiritual energy. And Aquarius, this is really where this about face is coming through for you here. This is really where you're starting to question, what have I been doing and what value, what innovation, what change is that really bringing to the collective here, okay? All right, oh no, the whole deck isn't reversed, but look at what just came out here, Aquarius. The Three of Wands, hold on a second. Let me change the scene here right quick so you guys can see the cards better. Three of Wands in reverse, and no, the whole deck is not reversed, okay? Um, so yeah, this is that about face right here. Right here, Aquarius, the Three of Wands in reverse. There is some sort of path that you've been on recently or lately that I don't want to say is not where you need to be. What I did hear is it's not where you're meant to be. It's not really truly what you're meant to be embarking on, what it is you're meant to be doing, okay? But many of you have been doing this. Um, many of you have been doing this to save face even. Um, You've been, you've been doing this Aquarius because at one point I did hear because it was the right thing to do. You have the six of wands now also with the king of pentacles. The king of pentacles is a fixed sign. You are also a fixed sign Aquarius. So this actually makes really a, a, a great deal of sense. Um, so some of you have been providers or you are providers, whether you're caretakers, you're heads of the household, you hold some sort of big position in a company, um, you work, f you're, you're a big name in philanthropy or um, you're, you know, uh, whatever. I mean, you're a leader in some, whatever. You've been, it feels like either this King of Pentacles represents the position, the status that you held. The King of Pentacles can also represent a 10th house energy, right? It's establishment, some sort of domination, or you've just been keeping up with the Joneses. You've been keeping up with the establishment. Here, what I'm feeling is that 
the about face is happening because there there is some sort of revolution that needs to happen here. And for others of you, I feel like it's that with this King of Pentacles energy, you really are meant to be in this leadership position, but you can't be a leader by keeping up with the Joneses, Aquarius. And this is so weird and funny. I mean, it, it actually, it does make sense because of the fixed element to your energy and the collective orientation towards you with uh, of your energy and feeling like you just wanted to you wanted to maintain the status quo because you wanted everybody to just be okay you didn't want to cause any trouble for anybody unfortunately though aquarius damn look at this unfortunately aquarius that is it that is actually and maybe this is what you're finding out or figuring out this month and then maybe this is a part of the reason why you're experiencing this about face because that's detrimental to people uh, keeping up a certain structure just because it's what they're used to, even uh, even though it's really not good for them and you know that, but you don't want to cause any more pain by trying to revolutionize the situation actually isn't helping them at all. Remember, uh, or Aquarius, you're all about expansion and liberation. You are you are the revolutionary. One of your ruling planets of Uranus is Uranus is that revolutionary energy. And when it comes to your other ruling planet of Saturn, you are the rule breaking aspect of Saturn, right? So I understand your fixed energy and that alignment, but keeping up with the Joneses for fear of hurting people because you're breaking the rules is actually more detrimental to people than you may have noticed in the past. And look at what just came out to confirm that. Ten of Swords, Five of Pentacles, and the Hierophant. So we started with the King of Pentacles. And now we're moving to the official status quo energy of the Hierophant. But look at that. Five of Pentacles and the Ten of Swords. You are meant to be revolutionizing situations. Or revolutionizing? Is that real? A word? Revo okay, sure. <laughs> but... Keeping, see, but keeping up the, the, with the Joneses was keeping people in a sense of an impoverished energy. And overall energy right now is the Five of Cups. You didn't want to break people's hearts because they were happy and they were content. Five of Cups, Three of Swords, Three of Cups. And then under that is the Five of Swords. Here you are recognizing the detrimental aspect to whatever it is we're referring to here, right? And freaking out over it because you know something needs to change. You know you're that agent of change, but you didn't want to make people's lives any more difficult than they already were by trying to influence some sort of change. But really, that was just an illusion. The fact that people's lives were going to be more difficult in the end. Of course, you know, change is never easy, right? It's going to come with its difficulties, but like, at the end of the day, a beneficial change is a beneficial change, right? And you are this revolutionary energy. So this is where this about face type of energy is coming from for you. All right, Aquarius. Um, I think I want to, I want to close out this section of the reading with um, some Oracle guidance from the Oracle of the seven energies. And then we're going to shift over to the general reading. Yeah. Let's get some closing energies for you, Aquarius. Or excuse me, for Aquarius rising for the month of January, 2022. Two more shuffles here. This is one. And this is two. Now, Aquarius, this revolution that you're going, that you're going through within yourself is so on point. For the whole collective, everybody is going through this. Why? Because Uranus is making a retrograde transit through the sign of the self, through the sign of the individual, through the sign of the impetus. I believe that's the right word. Aries. And of course, you're going to be heavily affected by this. Of course, you're going to, I mean, I feel like some of y'all are getting slapped in the face real hard with, with reality of the situation. Like literally, it feels like your soul is kind of coming down here and saying, smack, 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 smack. What are you doing? You have been wasting your time all this time, man. Like, let's get with it. You know, I mean, obviously they're saying it in a loving way, but 
it makes perfect perfect sense uranus is a revolutionary energy to begin with aquarius and of course you're going to be feeling this strongly one of your ruling planets your do maybe we could even say your dominant ruling planet is a uranus i don't know take that as it resonates but anyway all right <laughs> closing message for aquarius rising here Card number five, body and soul. So yeah, so it does. It definitely does feel like with this kind of about face energy for you, your body and your soul are coming into yes, you're are coming into greater alignment. Um, whereas it does feel like there was a bit of a disconnect there. Like your body and your mind and uh, your body and your mind were very much wrapped up in the ego, your egoic sense which is very three-dimensional. Like the ego is shaped by our three-dimensional reality. So that could be where the desire or the feeling of need to preserve the status quo came into play, right? Because that's what your ego was taught. You didn't want to ruffle any feathers. You didn't want to step on any toes, blah, 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 blah. You were also trying to keep your own self safe and not feel ostracized by your community. That often tends to happen with an Aquarian, okay? Because they're so revolutionary, okay? But with body and soul, I feel this fusion of your higher self, your spirit, and your body, and your conscious mind, your three-dimensional representation. The next card out is the royal you, which for me in this deck represents your higher self. So your higher self really is coming through here for you. Um, I wrote down... Um, I wrote down that with Jupiter in Aquarius, between straddled between the first and the twelfth house, it feels like this is helping to expand you in a way in which it's almost as if you can hear more of your soul. You can hear more of the guidance from your spirit. You can hear more of your higher self. You can hear more of the deeper you. Unfortunately, for some of you, that does feel kind of scary because it does feel like you're being reprimanded, but it's in a loving sort of way. Like, no, the, the universe isn't out to scold you, isn't out to punish you. But for some of you, if it does sound like this or feel like this, it's really just a sense of urgency. Get back on track. Get back in alignment. I wanted to say get back in line. No. Get back in alignment with you with who you're truly meant to be, yes? Okay. Yeah, that's it for you, Aquarius Rising. So now I'm going to regroup for a second and we're gonna get into the general energies for the month. Yes, here we go. Alrighty, guys. Welcome in. If you are just now tuning in, if you have skipped the first half for the Aquarius Rising, welcome. Yes, this is just going to be a general reading for the energy of Aquarius for the month of January 2022. There doesn't have to be any sort of um, uh, astrological affiliation as in like practice or discipline other than the fact of resonating with or having some sort of Aquarius placement in your chart. <clears throat> whether that be sun, moon, rising, or Venus. And also we could be talking to the cross watcher here, yeah? But of, co of course, if you are interested in seeing what's going on with Aquarius rising, um, check the first half of the reading, yeah? Cool, so I'm gonna start with the energy oracle deck. I'm gonna give this five shuffles, one. And I'm just gonna pull some messages. What do we have for Aquarius? Sun, moon, rising, Venus, maybe even a cross watcher for the month of January. 2022 yeah that's cool that was i lost count again i think that was three we're gonna say this was four <laughs> for my aquarians sun moon rising in venus and beyond what messages do we have Ooh, maybe even jupiter okay that was five all right what's going on what messages do we have for aquarius for the month of january what messages do we have for aquarius for the month of january card out for you Aquarius is journey. Now this is already kind of connected to what we were talking about for Aquarius rising. Um, I'm not going to retell that whole story. Go back and watch it if you'd like to. Um, if this part of the reading ends up resonating with you, then maybe go back and watch that because maybe even if you're not an Aquarius rising, some of that could resonate for you. Yeah. 
but you have journey here, Aquarius. Um, and there's something about your journey. I'm hearing you're about to go on a journey. Okay. A new phase of your life is starting. I am picking up on the romantic aspect of that heavily for a lot of you. Um, Venus is retrograde right now. Yeah. It's reshaping our values. She is reshaping our values, reshaping our alignment to interpersonal relationships and romance. So, uh, especially with her being in Sagittarius, I definitely feel like some of you are really going on a brand new journey when it comes to love. Happy family is next. Okay. So for some of you, this definitely does uh, talk about your family. Yeah, I was just going to say, you could be going on a um, on a journey of healing in terms of your family and uh, uh, tying up loose ends, reconciling, rectifying certain situations. Because then look, at the bottom of the deck is an angel of balance. So this, ba this journey you could be going on this month, Aries, I'm sorry, not Aries, Aquarius, um, <clears throat> could be in terms of bringing greater balance and structure to the life of your family, okay? A healing process is underway, all right? Now, others of you could be going on a journey to find a balanced and happy family life or situation. This could definitely be some of you, go, yeah, uh, yeah, look, the card that the next card that just came out is the door to personal healing and happiness. So this, and, and I definitely feel a heavy Venus retrograde or a heavy Venus transit influence there. Again, because Venus is currently reshaping our alignment with our values and our interpersonal relationships and romantic relationships. So some of you um, may be in a really a massively healing process right now in terms of that. And thus that's going to take you on a journey, or at least I feel for some of you, you're going to be much more willing to go on that journey to start, start taking those steps in terms of seeking out or finding or journeying for that happy family life. Okay. Um, or that, like that ideal partner, that ideal mate, but that can really happen now, Aquarius because of Venus's retrograde motion, which is helping you redefine what it is you want out of a relationship or what it is you truly value in your life. So now that you have that greater sense of insight, you can go on that journey towards opening or walking through, actually, I would say walking through that door to personal healing and happiness because it's been opened for you at this time. All right, let's move to the, uh, yeah, let's move to the tarot here and see what we can get with that. Now, also for those of you that resonated or watched the Aquarius rising part, this absolutely, this happy family energy could absolutely be the collective that you, or, or the part of the collective that you are meant to be serving in a different way this whole about face energy. So Aquarius, at, at least in terms of the astrology part, the title that I got for you was about face, like making an about face, uh, changing your direction, kind of making a little bit of a 180 in some cases. And that definitely could be you changing the direction in terms of how you, which direction you go in, in terms of moving forward with relationships or for those who resonate with the Aquarius rising reading, how you serve or relate to the collective, how you innovate, what you try to change and improve for the collective. Yeah. Five shuffles on the tarot here. One. Two. Three messages for my Aquarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, maybe even Jupiter. Jupiter is in your sign right now, Aquarius, at least in terms of sidereal astrology. So actually that makes sense. This is three. Four. five. All right. So I want to talk, I actually, I really want to talk about journey here, Aquarius. Yeah. So what is journey for Aquarius, please? First card out is the nine of pentacles. So you really could be going on a journey right now, Aquarius, in terms of greater 
a greater sense of sovereignty. Especially those of you that resonated with the Aquarius rising part of this reading. Uh, there is this, and even if you, even if you didn't watch that or you wouldn't watch that because you're not an Aquarius rising, I feel the message is still either the same or similar for you. There is a level of like your higher self, I want to say your sense of self-respect coming through and like slapping you across the face a few times being like, honey, buddy, what are you doing? You know, this isn't right for you. You know, this is in alignment with you. You know what it is you really want to be go moving towards. You have a greater sense of sovereignty and you're a free thinker. You can think for yourself. You're an independent individual. Why don't you go after what it is you really want? Knight of Cups. There it is right there. The Knight of Cups is your heart leading the way, right? Beautiful. Beautiful, Aquarius. What is this journey for Aquarius here? Four of Swords. Okay, think about it. But I feel like you've been thinking about it. And I feel like many of you are actually going to decide to go on this journey. The journey card can also be seen as the Two of Wands. I feel like many of you are going to be deciding to go on this journey from a very equally balanced mind. Now you have the Two of Cups at the bottom of the deck. All right, Aquarius. So... A number of things. One, some of you definitely could be thinking or or working on figuring out or considering or deciding on pursuing a, a relationship, getting into a specific relationship that may have been hovering around you for a while, or just deciding to come out of <laughs> come out of the dungeon, right, or out of your cave and start dating. For others of you, and, and maybe this is for everybody. But the other thing that I'm feeling here is that this two of cups could also be representative or indicative of the balance, the, 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 the relationship between the masculine and feminine energies within you, which is also under a level of reshaping right now, because by the time we hit March 3rd, Venus, Mars, and Pluto will all be conjunct. And the big narrative I have for the collective for the next three months is getting ready for that launch which is going to be that last conjunction between Mars, Venus, and Pluto all on the 3rd of March. So over the course of the next few months, you know, Venus is retrograde right now, and she's moving closer and closer and closer to Mars, where she's eventually going to go direct, and then the two of them are going to link up and are going to move forward conjunct in lockstep, hand in hand, until the final conjunction between Venus and Pluto on the 3rd of March. And that 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 final part of the conjunction right there is, is to me, the blast off point, okay? So the, whatever is going on here, Aquarius, I feel like this is really providing you, uh, is really helping you get ready. Yes, abs, oh my God, look at this. Underneath the Two of Cups is the Queen of Wands. Oh! Underneath the Two of Cups is the Queen of Wands, Aquarius. And I was just saying, as I was saying, help you get ready for that, I saw the Queen of Wands, which was perfect because the Queen of Wands is about your alignment, your energetic alignment that ultimately gravitates things towards you, right? Okay, well, look at what's under the Queen of Wands. Her counterpart, the King of Wands. There you go. There's Mars and Venus right there coming together, getting into alignment and blasting off. Underneath that is the Hermit. To, wow, underneath that is the Hermit to the Three of Wands. Okay, so especially if you resonated with the um, the Aquarius rising part of this, that's your path right there. That's you getting back on your path. That is you getting into alignment. That is you. That is Venus making her retrograde motion through Sagittarius, helping us to redefine what we what truly holds value to us, and then linking up with her counterpart of Mars and the two of them moving together while Mars is going through his own realignment process, and then moving together in lockstep once they become conjunct to move forward towards what it is we've come to a personal understanding of that has greater value for us. There it all is right there. That is excellent, Aquarius. That is excellent. Now, I'm not going to say this is not going to come out, come without its challenges. All right. But at the same time, 
at the same time, Aquarius, I really do fully believe that this is worth the struggle. Okay. Let's close this out. What do we want? Oracle of the seven energies. All right. So let's close this out for you, Aquarius. Oracle of, from the seven, of the seven energies. Closing message for this general part of the Aquarius reading. So for my Aquarian, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, maybe even Jupiter. Yeah. Two more shuffles. That's one. And this is two. All right. Closing message for Aquarius here, please, Spirit. Look at this, Aquarius. Uh, your overall energy here, or the card at the bottom of the deck, really truly aligns with what we've been talking about here for you. And you have the power of purpose. And this really is the energy that I feel the about face is coming from. Because again, especially for my Aquarian Aquarius risings, I feel like you guys are at a point, at a really pivotal point in your development or in your spiritual development right now, where you're really getting reconnected with the truth of what you're really, truly meant to be doing here. Your real true purpose, which I don't feel like looks like what it is you're doing right now. And that doesn't have to mean that you're completely, it doesn't mean that you're, all of you are doing a 180. It could maybe it could even be just a 90 degree pivot or a 10 to 20 degree pivot. I don't know, but there's something about this that needs to change so that it puts you in greater alignment with your real true purpose. Okay. And then finally here you have card number 49, willing release, and then card number 17, the storyteller. So I really feel like Aquarius this month, what this closing message is saying for you here is that you are you have the opportunity to willingly release the story you have been telling about yourself or the story about yourself or about your life that you have been playing out. I mean, what I'm feeling here, Aquarius, is that it's really just a story. And just because it's the story you've been telling yourself or it's the story you've been telling other people about yourself or it's the story that you've been living out in your life that doesn't mean that's necessary it's necessarily the truest version of your personal story so i feel like with this closing message here many of you or at least anybody who's resonating with this for aquarius right now you have the opportunity to willingly release the story that you've been telling yourself that doesn't naturally align with who the truth of who it is you really are, which is what I feel like you're getting in contact with this month. Quite frankly, Aquarius, I will say that you've probably been in the process of getting in contact with this uh, over the last six months. Yeah, because, and I feel that specifically because of, I'm going back to when Uranus started its retrograde motion through Aries. And Uranus does go direct this month, I believe on the 18th. So like, it's the culmination, you know what I mean? This is that moment where maybe it all starts to make sense or you start to make sense of it, or you start to understand how it is you need to proceed or how it is you need to move forward. You're starting to get the point of it. You're starting to see what it is you need to do, whatever right in time for Uranus, one of your ruling planets, to station direct. And once the, that station's direct, I feel like that's going to be a good time to really start putting what it is you've learned and what it is you've come to understand in process or like in, in motion, in motion. Yes? All right, Aquarius, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I am sending you all so much love. If you would like to get a personal reading with me, all of the information can be found in the description box below. Just send me an email. I'll get you all set up. If you would like to get more content from me throughout the month or and or if you would like to help to support the channel, check us out over on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. That link can also be found in the description box below. Lots of great stuff on there and lots of extra content. I do, I do tend to do daily readings when my workload, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, allows it. 
like right now I'm doing all these monthly readings, so I doubt I'm really going to be able to do much of a, a daily over there. I'm actually not even going to try and hold myself to that because I want to focus on these readings, but uh, lots of great stuff. You guys get preferential treatment. You get first say in how the channel is shaped moving forward and blah, blah, blah. So check us out over there. Yes. And if you're new here, uh, please consider subscribing. Yeah. Smash that like button for me. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic month and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of February. Yes. Excellent. Take care. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs>